section 10 of chapter 12, looking at sketching gradient functions. And really, this sort of diagram here is the only advice I've got for you. This is, this is a bit of a blunt instrument. There's no careful little algebraic techniques we can look at here. All you need to know is the derivative, f dash, is the gradient of the function. So if we have a function like this one, and I'm going to ignore the table for the moment, let's see what's happening. And I'm, I'm going to deliberately draw the function that they've got in the book because they've carefully set this function up so that we can uh, take into account lots of different things that happen. So what's happening? What's happening to the gradient specifically? Here the gradient is positive. So if I'm sketching the gradient, I need to start with a positive number. Is the gradient getting bigger or smaller? Is this line getting steeper or less steep? Well, the gradient is getting less steep, isn't it? So the gradient is going down until we reach this point here, when the gradient stops being positive and turns around to negative. So at that x-coordinate, if I bring that down, that is where the gradient is going to cross the axis because it goes from positive to negative. So the gradient starts here and goes down and hits the point of zero there. So there we go. We're going to do that sort of shape. Then what happens? The gradient is negative, getting more negative, and then getting less negative. So there's a point where the gradient goes from getting more negative to getting less negative. So that is about here, about on the y-axis, isn't it? So I'm going to have a turning point when that happens. Instead of getting steeper, the line gets less steep. So we turn around until we get to this point here when the gradient gets less and less and less negative. And there's a point here where it looks like it flattens out entirely. So the gradient gets up to zero again. So that sort of thing happens. Then what happens? The gradients hit zero and then it gets more negative and more and more and more and more and more negative. So the gradient goes off again to be uh, a bigger negative number. And hopefully, yes, I have. I've got the same sort of thing as they had in the book. Okay. So that's the only technique you can use. Just ask yourself, what is the gradient doing? Don't worry about whether the line is crossing, the curve is crossing the x-axis, crossing the y-axis. Worry about what is the gradient doing? If you've got a maximum or a minimum or what looks like a stationary point, then that's telling you the gradient has got to zero. But you should get that anyway, because you're thinking, well, the gradient here is positive, the gradient here is negative, and you know where you can go from positive to negative without hitting the x-axis, okay? Now, this table here, just a word of warning, this is a, it's in some ways a really useful table, because you can go through this and do you understand why, when the function has a maximum or a minimum, why does the first derivative cut the x-axis? Well, because if it's a maximum, it, the gradient goes from positive to negative, so you've got to go through zero. If it's a minimum, it goes from the gradient goes from negative to positive, so you've got to go through zero. It's useful from the point of view of reading what it says in it and checking that you understand uh, why those things are true. It's not useful if you try and memorise that. What you don't want to do is look at a function and go, right, I've got a maximum here, so I need to hit the x-axis. I've got a point of inflection here, so what does it do? It touches the x-axis. A positive gradient, so it needs to be above the x-axis. You need to really be able to do those for, and, and from an intuitive sort of point of view. So just ask yourself the question. It, you, you're not asking yourself the question, is there a maximum or a minimum or a point of inflection or a positive gradient or a negative gradient? Just ask yourself, what is the gradient doing here? Okay? If it's positive and getting lower, then that's what your first derivative should be doing. It should be positive and getting smaller. So don't try and classify this into five or six different rules. Um, it's not a kind of rule part of the book. It's not one where you can just follow this set of rules in this order. It's one where you've got to think about the situation, think about what the gradient is doing, and that will give you the answer. Now, if that sounds a little bit vague, my apologies, but that is, um, that's the nature of the beast with that exercise 12J. Uh, good luck with those ones.